Hi, this is Nabil Asif from Click Australia. In this video, I will show you a ClickSense demo app that I built for the Victoria State Government's Department of Health and Human Services. While the actual demo app contains some sensitive data sets, the version I'm going to show you here is based entirely on public data, which is available on government websites. The primary data set for this app comes from this Excel file here, which provides a large number of indicators for all the local government areas in Victoria. The indicators provide some rich information, ranging from demographics to health, well-being and socio-economic factors. But as you can tell, this data would be hard to explore in Excel or even in traditional BI tools. So we first need a good way to explore this data set. And that brings us back to our ClickSense app. The first thing you might notice is that the indicators are now compiled into one field, which lets me quickly search for what I'm looking for. I've also added in fields to categorize the indicators. Combined with Click's green, green, white, gray associative model, this helps me easily narrow down to the indicators that I'm interested in. Now selecting one particular indicator, let's proceed to some analysis. On this sheet, my selected indicator has been plotted on a map of Victoria's local government areas. A color coding based on the indicator values lets me quickly pinpoint LGAs where the rate of children in home care is highest. I can also switch to ranking the LGAs based on this indicator and see the top and bottom ranked LGAs. So, by bringing in this dataset to ClickSense and doing some easy data modeling, we are able to explore the dataset much more intuitively. Now, the Department of Health and Human Services groups LGAs into regions for internal purposes. Unfortunately, there is no KML or mapping file available for these regions, as this is the department's own custom grouping. However, ClickSense provides powerful data transformation capabilities and I was easily able to aggregate geographical data for the LGAs into regions. This allows for all our indicators to be viewed by both LGAs and regions. The next logical step is to allow multiple indicators to be analyzed in parallel. I have done this by color coding the visualizations on this sheet according to the legend on the left. This lets us compare the distribution for our selected indicators by value or ranking and explore top and bottom ranked LGAs by different criteria. We can also examine linear correlations between selected indicators across the entire dataset. This is a powerful way of exploring the data as we can validate suspected correlations and even discover new and unexpected insights. On this next sheet, the same comparative analysis can be done for the department regions. Of course, since ClickSense is designed for self-service, you can always look for new ways of exploring the data. If I switch to edit mode, I can quickly create a new sheet. Users can make use of the visualization library that would have been prepared by the original author. Or they can create new visualizations easily using dimensions and measures available in the app. Such visualizations can help answer new questions that come up while analyzing the data. Up till now, we have seen that by using ClickSense, we made data discovery intuitive and created an app that can lead to some real insights. My next step was to make use of this app to look deeper at a specific topic that is one of the top priorities for the Department of Health and Human Services. To present this part of the app, I will use the story mode in ClickSense. The first slide introduces the topic of our exploration, which is family violence incidents in Victoria. To explore this topic, I brought in an additional da public data set provided by the Victoria Police Department into this app. This allows us to analyze indicators of family violence over multiple years. What we can see is that the trend seems to be going up. This is partially explained by government initiatives to raise awareness and provide support to victims, allowing more cases to come to light. 
but the truth is that the trend is going up and more needs to be done to combat this issue. As I explored this data set, I could see that the trends were not uniform across the different LGAs. Some areas were seeing a sharp rise in the rate of such incidents, while others were seen to be improving. By looking at the differentiating factors between such areas within a, specify, a specific time period, uh, the Department of Human Services may be able to gain new insights that could lead to more effective policies. I next decided to do an analysis of the indicators from the original dataset to explore correlations to family violence. Now the highest correlated indicator turned out to be the rate of substantiated child abuse, which is another key issue that the department is focused on combating. The chart you are seeing here plots the correlation of all the other indicators in the dataset against family violence and substantiated child abuse. The shade of each point indicates the strength of the correlation. Some of these correlations give evidence of things that were believed to be true. For example, low income and welfare dependent families are more vulnerable to these issues. Similarly, alcohol and drug issues are more prevalent in LGAs where rates of family violence and child abuse are higher. But this char chart also brings to light some very striking insights. For example, teenage fertility, which is the rate of live births by mothers aged 19 or less, is highly correlated to both family violence and child abuse. On the inverse side, the higher the rate of infants fully breastfed at 3 months, the lower the rate of family violence and child abuse. There are many such remarkable insights here, which while raising new questions, also give us clues that can lead to a better understanding of the factors leading to these issues. Eventually, what we want to drive towards are actionable insights. Data discovery can directly lead to these by helping us follow our train of thought until we can reach some conclusions. On this slide, I've brought together the indicators on family violence and child abuse, together with the population density of the LGAs. By calculating an average ranking across the indicators, we can highlight key areas where resources need to be focused. This analysis can, for example, be used to plan the deployment of new child protection services in Victoria, so that government initiatives have the highest impact. In conclusion, we have seen how ClickSense brought out some incredible insights from a dataset that initially looked hard to explore. I was able to follow my thought process, adding in new analysis where necessary, and I was able to build a compelling story that demonstrates the power of data discovery. We hope to raise awareness within the Department of Health and Human Services and help create a culture of data-driven decision-making, using ClickSense to make a real difference. I hope that you too can see the potential of Click and are beginning to think about how you could make use of it in your life and your work. Thank you for listening, and goodbye.